the Williamson ether synthesis converts an alcohol to an ether via a two-step process. The first step involves treatment with a strong base, and the second step involves SN2 reaction with an unhindered alkyl halide. The alcohol is initially deprotonated by a strong base, such as sodium hydride. The conjugate base of the alcohol, known as the alkoxide, is the product of this step. The alkoxide can also be formed by treatment of the alcohol with other strong bases or with sodium metal. The second step of the reaction is an SN2 process in which the attack of the alkoxide on the electrophilic carbon of the alkyl halide displaces the halide leaving group. It's important to note that since this is an SN2 process, the electrophilic carbon in R prime must be unhindered. Ideally, it should be methyl or a primary carbon. Also note that this is the step that forms the second carbon oxygen bond of the ether product. In this specific example, we will prepare a symmetrical ether, namely dimethyl ether. To do so, methanol must first be deprotonated by sodium hydride, and this process yields sodium methoxide and hydrogen gas as a byproduct. In the second step of this synthesis, sodium methoxide is treated with methyl bromide. The alkoxide attacks the electrophilic carbon, thereby displacing bromide as a leaving group. This reaction forms the new carbon-oxygen bond of the ether product, which is dimethyl ether. In this specific example, we will attempt to make an unsymmetrical ether, and this will illustrate the importance of carefully selecting the alcohol and alkyl halide starting materials. Let's consider the preparation of tert butyl methyl ether, which is also sometimes known as MTBE or methyl tert butyl ether. This ether can be successfully prepared if tert butanol is selected as the alcohol starting material. It can be deprotonated through the use of sodium hydride to give tert-butoxide. In the second step of the reaction, tert-butoxide is treated with methyl chloride and the alkoxide attacks this unhindered methyl carbon, displacing chloride, yielding our MTBE product. On the other hand, had we selected methanol as the alcohol starting material, our synthesis would have failed. Methanol can of course be readily deprotonated by sodium hydride to afford methoxide. However, we would run into problems in the second step of the synthesis. Had we chosen methanol as the alcohol starting material, then we would have no choice but to select terbutyl bromide as the alkyl halide starting material. However, terbutyl bromide has an electrophilic carbon that is tertiary, and we know that tertiary centers are not suitable for SN2 reaction. They're too sterically hindered to allow the approach of the strong nucleophile. Methoxide is a strong nucleophile or base. If it is unable to act as a nucleophile, it will instead act as a base, removing a proton from the beta position and thereby leading to the formation of an alkene product through E2 reaction. Notice that had we chosen methanol and terbutyl bromide as starting materials, we would have failed to produce an ether product. 
In summary, the Williamson ether synthesis is a particular application of the SN2 reaction. An alcohol is deprotonated in order to convert it into a strong nucleophile. This strong nucleophile, the alkoxide, then reacts with an unhindered alkyl halide to yield an ether product. This has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.